great philosopher Woody Allen said, uh, I I'm not afraid of death, I just don't want to be there when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> so Suzanne offers you a new way of disposing of your body, but what if you don't want to die? What if you'd like to live, if not forever, for a long, long time? What if you have this thought that perhaps in some not too distant future, these miracles of medicine that are announced practically every day might come up with a cure for the particular thing that is in the process of killing you. Who are you gonna call? Not Ghostbusters, you're gonna call Tanya. Tanya Jones. Cryonics is a process whereby through the application of extreme cold, we may someday be able to extend your life. It involves cooling the human body or the brain, which to the best of our knowledge is the seat of memory, identity, personality, all those things that make you you, until such time as you can be cured of AIDS, heart disease, old age, all those things that are perpetually killing pretty much everyone on the planet. Aging alone kills 100,000 people a day. But there are things that already we can cure that 50 years ago wasn't curable. What if you could be transported from today, where the technology doesn't exist, to some time in the future where cures can happen? Cryonics is the way that we are attempting to do this. This is an experiment. It is a procedure that doesn't yet work but we're continuing to research ways to ensure that someday it does, or possibly to prove that it doesn't. But one of the interesting things about the application of cold all by itself is that for every 10 degree drop in temperature, you get a 50% reduction in metabolic demand. This is huge. This is one of the reasons why neurosurgery can do some of the things it does, bypass operations where they cool the patient down to hmm, 34, 35 degrees, and then slow the metabolism, do the repair, and people get up and are happy and healthy and go home. There are three stages of death. Clinical death, your heart stops. Your breathing stops, you have a heart attack, you fall to the floor, clinical death. As soon as your heart stops, the deterioration begins. Your body consumes the oxygen stores that you have, starts consuming the ATP, the other energy sources, and then once those are consumed, uh, things get a little more imbalanced. With a heart attack, you've got six to 12 minutes to restart that heart before permanent damage sets in. If you're in a hospital when it happens and you've got somebody who knows their pharmacology, you might be able to extend that to 15 minutes. That's not quite long enough. So usually, if that happens, you're beyond that stage, a doctor will declare legal death. This is the second stage of death. But there's a third. That stage is when are you irretrievably, forever unrecoverable, not just today, where there's a long list of things that we can't cure you of, but tomorrow or the day after. That's what cryonics is about, making sure that, at least until we know, whether or not this ultimately will work, that you have a chance, a hope at life. There may be a thousand people around the world signed up for cryonics today. There's only about 150 people who have been preserved. Most of these thousand people are young, healthy, optimists. They love life. They absolutely think people are fascinating, they value themselves and they value the people around them, and they want to have more. It's not exactly that they want immortality or some of these other things that, that are attributed to cryonics somewhat falsely. It's just you feel like you want to have a choice of when you die. You want to have the option of living for as long as you want. So they engage in this experiment in the hopes of overcoming a premature death. So what we do is we store them in liquid nitrogen nice, safe, non-toxic, readily available, inexpensive cooling medium. 
We store them in what is effectively a giant thermos bottle that boils off a little bit of liquid nitrogen every day, and all you have to do to maintain their state is top it up once in a while. It's pretty simple. But the res restoration process, the revival process, is something that is going to require, at least for the people that we have preserved today, advanced medical nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is one of the interesting things that you're probably going to start hearing a lot more about if you haven't yet. Medical nanotechnology will cure broken bones at the site of the bone break. All of these little ailments uh, that, that afflict us today, we can see today are going to be cured. Just the other day, it was announced that stem cell therapies restored paralyzed rats. They rest it restored the use of their limbs. Now, this was a virally induced. You know, not all paralysis comes from viral uh, mechanisms, but it shows hope. One of the big things that we don't yet know that almost nobody cares about is when you go from that clinical death point, legal death point, to what's called information theoretic death. This is the point where the structure of the cells, the brain, especially we care about, but when the structure becomes irreversible, you can't infer, you can't repair, and you can't restore. Used to be before defibrillators, or even before CPR, your heart stopped, that was it. Took 50 years for CPR to get adopted more universally. Uh, took 50 years for defibrillators to become more common. It's probably going to take 50 or 75 years for cryonics to catch on as long as we keep working on proving it'll work. Even if it doesn't work, the research that's going on today in cryonics is already helping to save lives. We have organ banking is a problem. We don't have it. If you can preserve these organs in liquid nitrogen instead of the whole body, which is a very complicated um, it's a very complicated problem because of the different tissues involved. There are some parts of the body that can take up the cryoprotectants really, really easily. Uh, the organs do especially well. But things like skeletal muscles and, and fatty tissue, which you know I'm not that attached to, those don't cryopreserve very well. Uh, but if you keep working in that direction, maybe some good will come of it. If we can start banking kidneys from these people, you won't lose the organs in transition. You won't have to use, try to use an organ immediately because there's almost a match. You can simply save lives by having more available. We don't really know what the revival and the restoration process is going to look like. We're still trying to solve the problem of how do we freeze these things properly. But uh, the first time we wake something up, uh, somebody up, and they go, Thanks. experiment's over. It's all about saving lives. <laughs> Thank you.